On May the 19th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was invited to perform at Madison Square Gardens for President John F. Kennedy's birthday. The talented actress and singer gave them the show of a lifetime. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. However, months later, America received very shocking news about Monroe. She was found dead in her room. According to reports, it was a suicide and she overdosed on her sleeping drugs. However, the mysterious thing about her death is it happened barely weeks after she threatened to reveal the true status of the long-rumored relationships with the Kennedys. Join us as we explore the mysterious circumstances surrounding Marilyn Monroe's death and the possibility of a connection to her rumored relationship with John F. Kennedy. Marilyn Monroe was introduced to the president in 1956 by Peter Lawford, JFK's brother-in-law. While there were rumors that Marilyn shared some sort of romance with Lawford, there was never substantial evidence to ever prove this claim. But most people believe that Lawford just passed Marilyn off to JFK when he got tired of her. One thing we know for sure, Monroe had eyes on the president, and she was desperate. This became very obvious in the type of show she put on during the president's 45th birthday. And there were records, call records, that proved that Monroe was a frequent caller of the White House. Considering JFK's documented history of romantic ties with a lot of women, it's very difficult to believe that the First Lady would always be there to satisfy the President's avid sexual desires. I mean, it was reported that JFK told British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, the first time they met, that he gets sick if he stays without a woman for a couple of days. Well, Harold, I get these terrible headaches if I don't have a woman every three days, JFK confessed, as reported by Richard Reeve, Harold's biographer. So, a man like JFK in an unnamed relationship with one of Hollywood's most desirable women. It was only a matter of time before the public began to put one and two together. As a matter of fact, while there is scattered evidence about JFK's romantic connections outside his marriage, we have nothing about Marilyn Monroe. Just rumors, really strong, defying ones. A man even claimed that he saw them on the back seat of a Rolls Royce when he was parked at one of Lawford's parties in Malibu. All these rumors and all we have is a single picture of Monroe with Mr. President. It is as almost as if they were too careful. This is why Marilyn's death is very mysterious, as she died just weeks after deciding to publicly share the status of her relationship with the President. This picture was taken by White House photographer Cecil Stoughton and was kept a secret for almost a decade, only to be released in 2010. This rare photo was taken at the home of movie executive Arthur Krim after JFK's birthday celebration. In attendance at the party were some of America's finest talents, including comedians Mike Nicholas and Elaine May, singer Harry Belafonte and his wife, Hollywood star Jimmy Durant, actress and singer Diane Carroll, among other prominent personalities. As always, Marilyn stood out in the presence of stars, still wearing her performance outfit from the evening. She mingled with other dignitaries in the room, linking up with the president that same night. Just as the president turned away, this picture was taken, and it featured not only the president, but his brother, Bobby, who was also rumored to be having an affair with Monroe. It was pretty clear that she was having sexual relations with Bobby and Jack, James Spader, Marilyn's biographer, reported in an interview with People magazine in 2012. Spader didn't believe the rumors of the Kennedys being involved in the death of the actress, but you can't just deny the fact that it was one of the biggest mysteries of the 20th century. Witnesses reported that they heard angry voices, two of which were recognized as the voices of Lawford and Bobby, coming from Monroe's home on the night she died. She was also heard screaming. Another interesting discovery is that after Monroe's death, a suicide squad was put together to unravel the so many mysteries hovering over the sudden decision to take her life. However, according to Donald Wolfe, the author of The Last Days of Marilyn Monroe, the so-called squad did not interview Lawford or any of the Kennedy brothers with the many fingers that were pointed at them to be directly responsible for the actress's decease. Both the forensic work and the police investigations were hopelessly flawed, biographer Summers reported. Not many people know this, but a couple of professionals who were directly involved in the shabby investigations were promoted later on. Something spooky really happened, but Spader still maintains that he doesn't think that the Kennedys had something to do with her death. 
He knows that they were trying to cover something, and this, he believes, was Marilyn's romantic connections with the family. The public probably read the whole thing wrongly, according to him. But Monroe's second husband, baseball player Joe DiMaggio, was not buying any of this. He claims that Monroe told him that someone was planning to kill her, and this someone, or some people, he believes were the Kennedys. They did in my poor Monroe, and she didn't know what hit her, he told Positano. The whole lot of Kennedys were lady killers, and they always got away with it. I always knew who killed her, but I didn't want to start a revolution in this country, he added. Words from a former secret special agent of the Kennedys, Jerry Blaine, claims that the president has only met the actress twice. The first was during her infamous birthday performance song, which was dedicated to him, and the second was at his birthday after party. He probably thanked her for singing, and they were not alone, Blaine reported. I never saw any evidence of an affair, but I don't know what happened behind the closed doors. If that is to be believed, how do you explain the frequent calls to the White House, the seductive song performance, and the consistent rumours of an affair? Monroe probably had some connection with the Kennedys. Otherwise, what else were they trying to cover after her death? Or perhaps they know something that we don't know about her death. On the other hand, Marilyn Monroe, with all the fame and money, lived a very troubled life. She spent her entire childhood in the foster care system. She has been through 12 foster parents and even made it to the orphanage once. As an adult, Monroe didn't have the best of relationships either. She has been in three broken marriages with no children. She really wanted kids of her own, but unfortunately she couldn't, and for the time she took in, it always ended with a miscarriage. And the long history of substance abuse just supports the argument that maybe she really did overdose and die. Marilyn depended on them butyl to sins to wake up. She was also reported to have experienced a series of mental related issues, including depression, anxiety, and chronic insomnia. Mental illness ran in Monroe's family. Her grandmother killed herself, and her mother didn't even recognize her daughter. This is why Monroe's suicide case remains a very difficult case to demystify. But here's Lawford's side of the story. He claims that he had called Monroe earlier before her death. He was hoping to convince her to attend his party that night, but she sounded like she was heavily drugged. And these were her final words to him. Say goodbye to Pat. Say goodbye to Mr. President. And say goodbye to yourself, because you are a nice guy. Lawford claims he tried all he could to reach to her that night, but he couldn't. And the following morning, he was shocked by the news of her death. On November the 22nd, 1963, just a few months after Monroe's death, President JFK was assassinated as he rode in a motorcade through Dealey Plaza in downtown Dallas, Texas. And until today, there's still no solid pointer as to who did this and why they did it. Do you think that there's any slightest possibility that these two mystery murder cases might be connected? Also, let us know your thoughts on the JFK and Monroe's alleged affair in the comment section below. While you're at it, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this.